Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial for M Crater. Today what we're going to be covering is water plant as it's been mostly voted for. I thought we would start with actually just showing you what it actually looks like in game. We're actually using structures, a single block. The block is waterlogged so we can basically spawn it underground. Now we have to actually make it waterlogged in order to make it like this but I'll explain all that in just a couple minutes. Now as you can see these structures are actually generated generating in kind of like a cluster and as you can see they're they're all over the place they're like some over here and there's another group that spawned over in this area down here so I've set it so it's only in rivers now it can't you can choose whatever biome that you do want it in but I figured most of you would probably want it in specific biomes so I, I set it up that way and uh, for the most part it works good if you want more of them then you can just increase the uh, amount of structures that spawn so let's hop into amp crater and I'll show you how it all works there are four things that make up this particular project we have a block a procedure for the block, the structure, and a additional condition for the structure as well. So there are two types of procedures and there is two types of elements. Now we're going to start with the block, just cover the important settings. If you're going with an animated texture, you want to make sure the animated texture is here. This is for the particle. You can also assign your particle texture down here as well if you want to. I have set the item texture for making it more seem like kelp, which is the same texture as kelp and you want to make sure that you can set the block as water loggable so check this box and then you want to make sure that your model is cut out transparent and you want to make sure that this box right here check this box check this to hide fluid texture when water submerged now this is important so make sure that these two right here are checked and if it's a custom model then most likely it will be then you want to make sure that this is checked as well and that it's on cutout Everything else is pretty much irrelevant on this page. For these settings, you for plants, what you want to do is you want to make sure that it can be walked through. So you can walk through the block, make sure this is checked. All the other settings can be set to whatever you want. Plants in general are set to zero for hardness and resistance. So you might want to set that to that. And if you want to adjust your dropping properties or anything like that, you can do that. Plants are also replaceable in most cases, except for flowers and a few other things so if you're going something for more like grass you might want to enable is replaceable and this will just allow you to place a block like solid block like planks or something on where the block is and it will replace the block so if you want to do that then you can check that box there other than that all these settings are fine additional properties we have a tick rate of set to one it doesn't really matter what you set your tick rate to we're not using an update tick and you want to make sure that the block color on map is set to water now that's important for actually making the map color seem like there's water there so if it's spawning one block in a shallow water so there's one block of water and then there's air above and the block spawns on in that area if you set this map color to whatever it is then it's also going to change if it's actually near the surface so the only way that to fix that is to make sure that the color on map is set to water for the rest of the settings I'll all good to go so we can just move on uh, you want to enable MVT data for making sure that the procedure runs properly and then energy we don't have anything like that one thing to note you want to disable the inventory slot number so set that to zero and uncheck these two boxes no inventory or fluid storage or uh, energy storage so we can move on to triggers and then we have one block added for the trigger so in our block added procedure what we're doing is we're testing for two conditions the first condition that we're testing for is if the current block is a fluid source and if that's false then we're also testing if the current block or the block below is sol not solid so it's set to false as well so if this is not a fluid source at the current location and the block below is not a solid block then what we're doing is we're just going to remove block and drop the the particular item for that particular plant type then what we're doing again is we're testing for each individual one so this tests for both conditions this tests for either or 
if there is a not a water source at that at the current block location where it's going to be spawning then it's going to destroy it or if it's not a solid block below then it's going to break the block as well the only other condition that we have here is we're testing if the block get block currently at and then the y axis negative one is equal to or equal to basically the same plant that we have and this will basically allow it to not be placed on top of each other so that's kind of important for that to run now to build that what you're going to need to do is go to flow control grab a double condition statement like this and then what you want to do is you want to go to logic grab a light blue operator like this click on the equal sign set it to and right click on it and then you want to go to external input so it goes like that you want to duplicate this and then you want to set this to or after you've done that what you want to do is you want to create a another logic statement so we're just going to duplicate this a couple times like that so we're using the light blue operator again and then we want to go back to logic grab a true statement and then we're going to set that to false by clicking on it and setting it to false and then what we want to do is go to block and then we're going to scroll down until we see is block solid and then what we're going to do is get a math operator we're going to place that down there we're going to put the y in the slot we're going to put the math operator there then and then we're going to grab a number operator and we're going to set this to one and then we're going to set the math operator to minus one and then we can put that in our bottom slot right here so when we have that done what we need to do is search for a condition that says is and then the block type a fluid source so we're going to block and then we're going to scroll down right here and it says is and there's a option for a block and then it says a fluid source and then we're going to take this we're going to place that right there we're going to delete this box right here and then we're going to go to back to block and then we're going to scroll down until we get block at and then we're going to place that in here and that's all set up so now we just need to duplicate this and we're going to put that there and we're going to duplicate that and we're going to put that right there and now that for our condition is all set up we need to go back to block though and then we're going to scroll down until we see a remove block with drop so this one right here and we're just going to drop block like so and for the last condition what we need to do is go to logic grab a regular if statement plop that down like that we're then going to go to logic, grab a yellow operator, and then what we can do is just duplicate the get block at from up here, and we're going to place that right down here, and then we're going to duplicate the y negative one from that procedure, and then we're going to place that right in there. From there, what we need to do is go to Minecraft components, grab the block procedure like this, so we can select our block, and then we're going to select our block for our water plant. And then we just want to make sure that we drop the block as well, so we can just duplicate this procedure right up here and you're good to go so when you have all that done uh, just go to generation and you might want to clean it up a little bit just disable any boxes like that and uh, there is nothing else you need to do in the block itself the next thing that you need to do is create a structure you can do that by going to the plus sign and then selecting structure spawn and then you're going to start configuring your structure before we do that we need to do something first and that is going into the game and setting up our actual water log block so it actually doesn't look weird when we actually spawn it with a structure so we're going to start up the game go in game and we're going to get a structure block and set that all up so that will only take a second all right to actually set up your water logable block what you need to do is you need to grab a couple regular blocks just to fill in a square like this and then what we want to do is we want to go to our plant search up our plant we're going to place that down um generally it won't place in, unless it's in water because of our procedure but if we place a water bucket then what you want to do is find a water bucket and where is it there it is and then you're just going to place it down like that and then you're going to place your plant in there so it basically water logs and then what you want to do is just go and type in give and then add a and then structure and then structure block should come up and then you want to look at where the axis is pointing where the point all meets so all three axis points is where you want to put your structure block so we're going to place it down right here because we're going to increase the number so it's one i'm just going to turn off mobs so we can basically properly set this up so when you do that click on the block and then you want to set it to your plant so something like um, red 
and then maybe underscore kelp and then we're going to set the relative position to 111 and then the structure size to 1 1 and 1 and then you want to save it and then it will save it as red kelp but it's also going to keep the properties to let it know that it's waterlogged so when you have done that uh, if your plant is both water and plant or water and air based then you're going to want to make another structure place it down structure spawn it the exact same way and you should be good to go for that as well i'll explain how to basically set up two different versions in just a second let's go back into m creator and i'll show you how to set up your procedure or your structure for the actual settings and stuff that you need for your structure when you have actually set up your structure saved it what you want to go and do is go to structures import from minecraft and then you want to set your red kelp here i've already imported one called red kelp so we're not going to do that and then what you're going to want to do is go and create a structure spawn like i said before and then what you want to do is set the structure spawn to that that you've imported into your M Crater project. Now, generally, water plants structures don't really spawn that often for singular items. Now, you can kind of make it spawn a little more frequently, but it's kind of hard for it actually generating plants through structures. So what you want to do if it's not enough is set this to 16 and set this to 16. It should be more common. Now this is the minimum structure size or structure group. So it will spawn anywhere from 16 blocks to 16 blocks in one cluster. Now we're also making it very common. This is as maximum as it can go for actually generating the plants itself. If it's still not enough for your liking, what you can do is you can actually just duplicate the structure and call it like number two, and then it will spawn twice the amount of what your regular settings are. Now, when you have all those settings set up, what you want to do is if your block is rotatable, then you want to set this to rotation so it can basically rotate and uh, ignore placing when, and then you just set structure block and that's fine. Just leave it the way it is. And then for the type of reference ground, detection you want to set this first block in motion then for the structure location set it to ground and for the offset what you want to do is set the y or the height equal to one and that will be important for it to actually spawn one block above with the procedure that we're running for on the block itself and then you want to make sure that your structure spawn is for the world is set to whatever world you want we're actually doing something a little bit different with the blocks that it can generate on is that through additional generation so just leave that blank and for the restrict to, to biome types I've set this to river you can set this to other biomes if you want to I suggest if it's a water plant to have it only in water biomes so if it's like a regular plant then create a different structure for it and then have it set to the non waterlogged version and for the additional condition what we're going to be doing is setting this up now we have a local variable two of them actually so what what's happening here is it's testing if the for a few different things the first thing that we're doing is we're setting our variables to false though so we have two local variables to create one you just click on the plus icon go to local variable both are logged so type in whatever variable I suggest typing them the same way in so found water and proper height and make sure that they're both logic so when you have done that what you want to do is go to minecraft variables set variable and then you want to go to logic get a true or false statement and then you want to set this to false and then you want to just duplicate that and set the other variable to the heights also to false now what this will do is it's going to automatically set the variables to false so if the conditions later on aren't true then it's just going to cancel out the actual procedure and not spawn the plant itself so what we need to do now is create an if statement so we're going to go to flow control if statement we're going to then get a logic operator light blue and we're going to set this to and and then what we're going to do is go back to logic get a dark blue operator and then we're going to set this equal to or greater than and then what we're going to do is go to minecraft components get y and then we're going to go back to 
the number or math and we're going to go and grab a number and we're going to set this to 53 and if it's equal to or greater than 53 which is our bottom layer of where the plant can spawn then we're going to do the same thing we're going to move, duplicate that part over to this part right here we're going to set this to equal to or less than and then 63 and then what this is doing is it's testing for a level range between 53 and 63 so 63 is water level where the water level ends so this is generally the water source like oceans rivers things like that are all that are biome based are all on level up go up to level 63 now I did some research and level 53 is generally what you need for the lowest point for rivers this will vary depending on what kind of ocean biome and stuff as well so you may want to adjust that as you please you can go lower generally you don't want to go over 63 though and then if that's true then we're just going to set the variable so we're going to go here duplicate our proper height and we're going to set this to true and then what we need to do is create a another if statement so we're just going to duplicate that we're going to remove this and remove that and we're going to get variable but we need a logic operator we're going to set that right here and then we're going to set this to true so we're going to put that right here then what we need to do is go to custom variables place down that and then we're going to set the proper height so now what this is doing is if this first condition gets tested for and the variable gets set to true then we're testing if the variable is true and if it's not then it's just going to skip right down to the bottom and not spawn the structure which is important because uh, we need to test for all the conditions before we actually spawn it. So the next thing that we're going to do is just test for the different types of water sources. So we're going to grab this procedure right here and or the uh, flow control then the if statement and then we're going to go ahead and grab a yellow operator. We're also going to actually go with another else if statement because there's three different types of water sources and we're just going to click on the gear icon and add that in our GUI and then we need to get block at. So we're going to scroll down to the bottom of the block procedures drop that in here we then need to go to minecraft components grab that yellow box so we can select our water so we want this one that one below it and the alternate bubble column one as well so these are the three conditions and if that's all true then what we're going to do is set our found water equals true for all of these conditions so now that we have that set up what we need to do is another if statement and if what we find water what we need to do is actually set if found water equals true then what we're going to do is just create another if statement and we're going to just clean this up so we can test for multiple blocks so for rivers what rivers have is dirt sand gravel and clay so you might want to place tell it to basically place on any of those blocks we can just duplicate this procedure right here and do some uh, configuration so we need to go water minus one so y minus and then we're going to get a math operator and then we're going to set that to one and then we need to set our blocks that we want to basically test for so if the block below is equal to dirt the block below is equal to sand if the block below is equal to gravel which is right here if the block below is equal to clay so clay is a little bit further over this direction right here then what we're going to do is go to uh, I believe flow control and then we're going to return and then we're going to return true and then we're going to duplicate this and make sure that all of those conditions return true oops not that one and we're going to duplicate that so if that's all good and we've tested for the proper height and the, we've then tested for the proper requirement for water and now we're testing for the proper block type below and then what we're going to do is this will run if all the conditions are met and then it will basically return true which will stop the procedure from continuing if it doesn't then we want to return false at the end here and that's just going to be on the outside of your procedure for your conditions so it's like that so hopefully you guys found today's tutorial helpful if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out